This week's sponsor of Quality Digest Live is Tuve Suit America. Take a minute to check out Tuve Suit America's free QMS webinar series at www.tuvamerica.com slash QMS webinars. All right, we're going to move on now to a, uh, a very interesting tech corner. This is, this is a good one. I, I really enjoy this one. Minitoyo recently announced, and we, we covered it in our newsletter, that they've come out with the world's very first 0.1 micron resolution micrometer. Very cool stuff. Oh, you're, you're, you're gearing up. Okay, it's good Are stuff. Are you worried? Uh, no, not yet, but I, I, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, Don't my worry, friends. it only lasts eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this, my friends, regardless of what Dirk is talking about, I don't know what he's talking about. This tech corner, this is a very, very interesting uh, piece of equipment that we're going to show you here. We're fortunate enough to have one of Minotoya's brand new micrometers with us today, and Dirk is going to demo it for us. He's going <laughs> to gear up, demo it for us. So, Dirk, uh, take it away. You're probably wondering why I'm that. putting these gloves on. Uh, <clears throat> if we remember our... Uh, our series of videos we did with Craig Howell at CPM Labs, when you're dealing with something like gauge blocks, which we are going to have here on the set in just a little bit, you got to make sure you don't get oil on them. you got to make sure right. they're, they're precision instruments. And so you really want, even in this setting, we really want to handle our, our, uh, our gauge blocks with gloved hands. So I don't want to get oil all over the gauge blocks that Craig Howell from CPM Labs has contributed to us. So there we're going to get into demoing okay. the, uh, the new Minotoyo gauge. Let's see it. Well, let me grab it. Okay. So, like Mike said, what we have here, courtesy of Mitotoyo, is a brand new micrometer from Mitotoyo. You may be going, gee whiz, great, another micrometer, they're a dime a dozen. But as Mike pointed out, this one is actually, according to Mitotoyo, the only 0.1 micron, 5 micro inch handheld micrometer uh, in the world. Brand new, out from Mitotoyo, and we're one of the first ones to get one. Um, let's take a closer look at this. Let me, uh, actually, let me bring one to compare it to. What I'm setting up here right now, this is a, another micrometer, an older micrometer loaned to us by Craig Howell. This is a, uh, probably a lot of you have uh, one of these or, uh, or a different brand. This happens to be a Mitotoyo, but you may have a different brand. Um, 50 millionths micrometer. That is, sorry, I was blocking that there. That's the 50 millionths micrometer. And here is the brand new one from Mitotoyo. This is a 5 millionths micrometer. You'll notice the controls are the same as what you're used to. We've got our mode for inches or metric. We're going to leave it in inches. Your set button or zero button. And your hold button, uh, which also functions as the on-off button on this particular product. So let's talk a little bit about resolution versus accuracy. On our older micro, uh, micrometer here, this, is, this particular model has got a 50 millionths resolution and a 50 millionths guaranteed accuracy. This one has a 5 millionths resolution, but a 20 millionths guaranteed accuracy. That's not unusual when you start getting into higher precision instruments like this, where the, the resolution and the accuracy are going to be different. Typically, the accuracy will be higher than the resolution, or a larger number, I should say. Okay, this particular model I have in my hand, this particular micrometer, according to the calibration sticker, has a uh, and measurement uncertainty of plus or minus 14 micro inches. So basically two and a half to three times more accurate than this device here. Let's do a little experiment and show you what all this accuracy actually means. So the first test I want to do, this is a gauge plug supplied to us by, by Craig. I'm going to compare the middle dimension, the middle diameter of this gauge plug to the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is zero this on the center. So I've got this in here. Let me ring it a little bit. And, sorry, I slipped that a little bit. Okay, we're showing zero. It's already zero because I've already been playing with this. Eh, not quite. Let's zero that out. And let's double check. And now we're at zero. Now let's go to the end. So we go to the end and we see we're still showing zero at the end of this. Now, so according to this 50 millionths micrometer, there is no difference between the middle of that gauge plug and the end of that gauge plug. But I happen to know that this is a used gauge plug. And you probably know where I'm going with this. If that's a used gauge plug, then there is no way that the end of that gauge plug is the same dimension as the middle because the end is what gets worn. So. 
We couldn't detect it with the 50 millionths micrometer. Let's take a look at it with this 5 millionths micrometer. We're going to do the same experiment all over again. I'm going to put this into the middle here, and we're going to zero it. And let's double check. Not quite there. Let's do that again. Back it off. Let's ring it in a little bit. There we go. Now we've got our zero. Okay. Definitely a zero. Now we're going to go to the end. We go to the end. Remember, on our 50 millionths, we did not see a difference between the middle and the end. On this one, we, I'm not sure if you can see it. There's a minus sign there. We're showing minus 30 millionths of an inch. I've done this experiment on this gauge plug probably two dozen times, and I will tell you that I get this same number every single time, between minus 30 and minus 35 millionths of an inch difference, which is what we would expect. We would expect there to be a difference between the middle and the end on an old gauge plug because the end's getting worn. One last experiment here. Let's go back to the middle. Remember, the middle was zeroed. We go back in there. Let's just make sure we're still zeroed, and we are. Great. Now, I'm going to take this, and let's go back to our camera here. I'm going to hold this in my hand. Now, you normally wouldn't do this. You all know better than to do this because we all know the physics of thermal expansion. However, this is just going to speed up a process, which could happen anyway, and actually has happened to me while using this particular micrometer. With your older 50 millionths micrometer, a little bit of temperature, uh, in, uh, putting a little bit of temperature, a little bit of heat onto your gauge plug, even for a short period of time, you would not have detected it with your 50 millionths micrometer. It wouldn't have shown up. But I will tell you that playing with this, uh, this brand new one from Mitatoyo, it does not take much time handling your gauge block or your gauge plug or whatever to put enough of a, of a temperature expansion onto the part for it to actually show up on the micrometer. Now, this is actually something gross. You wouldn't really do this. Uh, but it, does, it, does, it, uh, it, do, it will show you the sensitivity of this micrometer. So this has been about 30 seconds. So remember, we were zeroed. We're going to come back to the center of our gauge plug, and I get the same number every single time because I've been practicing this. If I hold this in my hand for 30, 45 seconds, I will see reliably a 30 micro inch expansion, 30 micro inch growth, between 30 and 35 growth in this gauge plug, really showing you that you have to be, when you have an instrument of this sensitivity, you really do have to be much more careful with how you're handling, I'll come back to this camera here, uh, you have to be much more careful of, of how you're handling not only your micrometer, because the micrometer it itself uh, can be influenced by temperature, but also any device that you're, you're measuring, because now you really have the sensitivity at your fingertips in a handheld micrometer to measure things that you've never measured before. So once again, this is the new high accuracy Digimatic Micrometer Absolute from, um, from Mitotoyo. Thanks to Mitotoyo for loaning this, and actually also thanks to uh, Craig Howell of CPM Labs for loaning us some extra equipment so we can show a couple of experiments to you. Very, very interesting. Yep. Uh, 0.1 micron. Yes, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Amazing, it's incredible. We're really glad they were able to send this to us. Yes, so. thank you, thank you, Minotaur, for yep. sending that to us. It's really, really much appreciated for uh, letting us send that over and check it out on, on a very interesting tech corner this this week. Yep. All right. Well, that's our show for the week. But before we close, I'd like to offer one more thank you to our sponsor, Tube Sued America. Find out all you need to know about how a quality management system can benefit your business. Tube Suit America's webinar series covers a variety of topics for ISO 9001, ISO 14001, OSIS 18001, ISO 50001, R2, TL 9000, AS 9100, ISO 13485, food safety and supplier auditing. Wow! wow. <laughs> that is a lot of great content from Tube Suit America. Find out more by visiting online at www.tubeamerica.com slash QMS webinars to check out 25 plus webinars from industry experts. You